First of all, we want to welcome and thank everybody for coming here and being in tennis for today. Uh, we're really excited to see some of the performances that are about to be displayed by some of our local students. And um, with that being said, we're we'll called this meeting to order. It is approximately 6.02 p.m. Uh, roll call. Alex Cantu, present. John is here. Francis Salinas, present. Armin Garza, present. I do declare a quorum. So we can please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. We don't have anybody saying. This afternoon, we have Sulathia Garza from Chapa Elementary. She's a fourth grade student, and she likes arts and crafts. She loves to play and watch football, uh, loves shoes, so I have a partner there, <laughs> uh, loves to read, and likes to play chess. Welcome, Sulathia, and uh, everyone is already standing, so you will lead us for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Salatia. You, you so did much. a great job. Thank you. Our next item on the agenda is approval of minutes. Special call meeting for January 29th. So move. Second. I got a motion by Mr. Alanis and a second by Mr. Cantu. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Approved. Next motion, uh, superintendent's report. Doc. Thank you, Mr. Garza. On the superintendent's report, we have uh, first item is enrollment for February the 6th, and we had 14,396 elementary students and 14,000. I'm sorry. I think I read it wrong. 14,123 elementary students and 14,396 secondary students uh, for a total of 28,519. Next, I'm going to call on Mr. Alaniz and uh, Ms. Salinas to please step forward and help us recognize our first honoree for today. Our first recognition this evening is recognition of Javier Hernandez. Javier is a supervisor at Benavides Elementary, and he was nominated as the TEPSA, Texas Elementary Principals and Supervisors Association, Assistant Principal of the Year for Region 1. We're very, very proud of Mr. Hernandez. His principal, Mrs. Donna Martinez, is here. Donna? Yes, thank you for being here. Thank you, Mr. Hernandez. Great job. <laughs> Our next item is recognition of Ann Richards Middle School 8th grade varsity classical guitar group. Mr. Ruben Adame, head administrator for fine arts, is going to help us introduce these students who will entertain us in a little while. Good evening, uh, Vice President Garza, Dr. B, members of the board. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you a very talented group of young ladies and gentlemen that will be performing for you later on in the, during the board meeting. Uh, they're going to blow your socks away. They're, they're fantastic. So I'm just going to say that and let them do the rest for you tonight. So introducing, first of all, Mr. Luis Ramos is our director that heads this program, and their principal is uh, Mr. Tom Ocaña, who is here. Mr. Tomas Ocaña is back over there. Okay, the first student is Rosaura Aguas. Gilbert Alviso. Benjamin Avalos, Jorge Chavez, Daniel Flores, Omar Garcia, Brian Martinez, Juan Martinez, Alberto Medrano, Cesar Morales, 
Miguel Palos, Haley Perales, Alexa Rodriguez, Aizen Padilla, Airo Reyes, Gustavo Vega, and Kevin Gonzalez. We look forward to listening to you guys in a little while. I hear you're great. Next item on the agenda is recognition of um, student volunteers and chess teams who participated in the regional chess team uh, tournament at La Jolla High School on January 20th and 21st. Hello, my name is JJ Guajardo Jr. from uh, STEM Early College High School. I'd like to talk a little bit, right before we release the names, of a little bit of uh, history behind it. La Jolla ISD's three high school chess teams took the top honors at the Region 10 Regional Chess Tournament that was held at La Jolla High School January 20th and 21st. Since their inception... Since their inception three years ago, these three teams have placed in every tournament they have competed in, earning over 25 team trophies and numerous individual trophies as well. Sponsors for the teams are myself, Mr. J.J. Wajardo at Thomas Salinas Stem Early College High School, Mr. Alex Martinez from Juarez Lincoln High School, and Mrs. Rachel Hennings at La Jolla High School. Along with our elementary schools, we're proud to announce that all these teams have qualified for the state competition, which will be held in Edinburgh on March 3rd and 4th. We wish our teams the best of luck. Before we congratulate and recognize all students for their amazing achievement at regionals, I would like to address you all about chess in La Jolla. My family was integral in starting chess in the Rio Grande Valley, starting in Brownsville over 28 years ago. My family played a pivotal role in San Marino chess 15 years ago, and now they too are a powerhouse. My family played an integral part in chess in Sherryland about a decade ago, and they too have become a chess powerhouse. But now it's La Jolla's turn. Right now, more people play chess population density-wise in the Rio Grande Valley than anywhere else in the world, and La Jolla ISD is part of that movement. It pleases me that I am part of the movement in La Jolla and what I know will become a chess powerhouse in the upcoming years. It has been an honor working with the coaches here in La Jolla, and I know that chess will continue to grow in our district. We thank you for your support and your future support in our endeavors. And now, let's get to the, the champions. The following students are from Thomas and Inez Stem Early College High School and placed first place in their division at the regional tournament. They are as follows. Elmo Garza. <laughs> Jonathan Sarmiento. Osiel Garcia. Jalen Villarreal. Edmar Garcia. Tyler Gonzalez, Edwin Ramirez, Derek Garcia, Elian Zamora, Anselmo Bueno, Victor Arredondo, and Eduardo Gonzalez. Congratulations, guys. The next team to be honored is La Jolla High School, who placed third place in their division. Students are as follows. Jonathan Davila. Joaquin Garcia. Jason Garza. Thomas Henning. Julio Martinez. 
Gabriel Rosales. Alisa Villagran. Edgar Elizondo. And Jose Freddy Reina. Congratulations. Congratulations, La Jolla High School. Congratulations, guys. This next school from Chapa Elementary was the first regional tournament that they, ever, they had ever participated in, and, found, and in their first tournament, they found much success. They garnered two team trophies, one in the K-3 section with sixth place and one in the K-5 section with ninth place. <laughs> two top ten trophies for your first tournament is absolutely amazing. Congratulations to those at Chapa, and here are the names that follow. Abraham Hernandez. Guadalupe Moreno. Mario Fernandez de Larra. Destiny Del Toro. And Zuleitha Gar Garza. <coughs> Congratulations, Chop Elementary. The next school to be recognized is Tabasco Elementary. And in their first tournament, they too placed as a team in the K-5 section, garnering seventh place in our region. And it's a really tough region. <clears throat> the students are as follows. Trayeson Garcia. Arbel Gutierrez. <laughs> Rosel Mendoza. <laughs> Amos Ortiz. <laughs> and Jose Manny Salinas. Congratulations to Basco Elementary. <laughs> the last group of kids that we'd like to uh, personally thank are the volunteers that gave up not just Saturday, but Saturday and Sunday to make it an amazing tournament for all of our students. Before we do that, uh, will all the parents of all the chess kids that were recognized please stand and be recognized? Thank you for your support. Thank you very, very much. Also, will the principals please stand and be recognized? Mr. Cano, Dali. Thank you. And then it's equally amazing when a group of young adults help put on this big, big tournament. And so that's our next group. So I'll let you introduce them. Thank you. And Dr. B, I've gone to over 25 regional tournaments. This was the best run tournament, and part of that reason was because of the kids we had. It was, it was amazing. These kids deserve so much thanks. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and go with the law students that helped out. So students are as follows. Melanie Barrera. Oscar Garza. Javier Martinez. Samantha Barrientos. Alejandra Gutierrez. 
Jorge Vázquez. Pedro García. And Jaco Pérez. I know these kids helped organize, and um, Ms. Henning, if you could please come <laughs> forward. I know Ms. Henning uh, worked all weekend to make this happen, and these young kids helped her uh, put on this huge tournament. So, Where do you want me? Here? sponsors, don't be shy. Come forward. Take a picture. Thank you, law students. And our final group that also assisted us in this endeavor was the JROTC. Those students are as follows. Juanita Torres. <laughs> Christian Torres. <laughs> Mariela Reyes. <laughs> Michael Hernandez. <laughs> and Amanda Chapa. Their sponsor. <clears throat> and to all volunteers, thank you once again. Our success would not have been possible without your hard work, sweat, and tears. Thank you again from the bottom of my heart. Ms. Salgado, for the next, do you want the trustees up front? Yes. yes. If I could ask all the trustees to please step forward. Um, for the record, Mr. Salinas joined us at 619, Mr. Pena and Ms. Ochoa joined us at 610. Because we had a noon meeting in January, we were not able to finish off the board recognition presentations. And so PR coordinator Lily Salgado is going to help us uh, with these presentations. Thank you, Dr. Benavides. Good evening, board president, school board of trustees, superintendent, and members of the audience. As Dr. Benavides mentioned, throughout the month of January, we celebrated our La Jolla ISD school board of trustees for their service and commitment to our students and school community. And tonight we conclude last month's celebration with 14 of our campuses who are here to present their special projects as a thank you for everything that you do and continue to do. Each school began with blank books whose pages have been filled with illustrations, messages, poems, and some creativity that stems from the heart of the students. First up, we have for Mr. Oscar Coach Salinas, Lizette Mojica from East Academy. If she could just stay there. Or... For Mr. Armin Garza from Mendiola Elementary, we have Enrique Hernandez. Also for Mr. Armin Garza from Ibirreina Elementary, we have Alexandria Rangel and Skylar Rodriguez. For Ms. Claudia Ochoa from Hope Academy, we have Mari Chaires. Thank you. 
Also for Ms. Claudia Ochoa from Garcia Middle School, we have Sydney Jimenez and Stephanie Moreno. For Mr. J.J. Peña from Benavides Elementary, we have Eralio Villarreal and Mia Flores. And Alexandra Salinas. Also for Mr. J.J. Peña from JFK Elementary, we have Brandon Garcia and Kayla Tavares. Thank you. For Mr. John Alanis from Diaz Villarreal Elementary, we have Kendra Morin. <laughs> also for Mr. John Alanis from Perez Elementary, we have Vanali Flores and Francisco Barrera. Thank you. For Mr. Alex Cantu, from Sam Fordyce Elementary, we have Barbara Zarate and Yuvia Alcala. Thank you. For Ms. Frances Salinas from La Jolla Early College High School, we have Briseidi Peña and Lindsay Cantu. Thank you. From Jimmy Carter Early College High School, also for Ms. Frances Salinas, we have Emanuel Castellano, Claudia Puente, Laura Martinez, and Angel Flores. Thank you. We're going to get our group shot with everybody, with all the kids in the board. We can have all the kids in the front and then the board members behind, behind your, your kids. Thank you. If we can have the board members stay, we have a couple more for more gifts for you. Thank you, everybody.
I'll put this away. Our college and career center also came up with some projects uh, that have to do with their first aid, their classes for medical, and they're each going to present to give to each of the board members. They are Sofia Hernandez, Joanna Guerra, Blanca Ferrara, Gala Carranza, and Jose Solis. Thank you. And last but not least, we also have our La Jolla ISD Head Start students who created this wonderful picture artwork. They are Asa Rodriguez and Aiden Gonzalez. Thank you to all the principals and students and everyone who invested their time and effort to create the gifts presented to tonight, to our school board members tonight. Thank you. For all the principals that are here accompanying their student groups, Principals and parents, please stand for all the presentations that were made. Thank you so much. Our last item on the agenda under superintendent's report is Ann Richards Middle School 8th grade varsity classical guitar group performance. Uh, President Salinas, Dr. Benavides, members of the school board, guests, and school, uh, La Jolla ISD Central Office Administration. Uh, tonight you'll be listening to the Ann Richards Middle School Varsity Classical Guitar Ensemble under, under the direction of Mr. Luis Ramos. They will be performing two Mexican revolutionary selections entitled <laughs> La Valentina, followed by La Borrachita. The last two selections will be Venezuela waltzes entitled Waltz Venezolano Numero Dos and Numero Tres. I now present to you one of our shining stars here in our district, the Ann Richards Middle School Varsity Classical Guitar Ensemble under the direction of Mr. Luis Ramos.
we could not think of a better way to close out Board Recognition Month than with this performance. You guys were outstanding. Great job. Great, great, great job. Thank you. And uh, since the theme was soaring to um, new heights, that our board members are helping kids soar to new heights, I think you guys are soaring with musical talent. And do you know that kids that are involved in the arts do better in school? So I'm glad that you're involved in fine arts. I'd like to thank your parents, parents that are in the audience. Please stand and be recognized. <laughs> Again, thank you to your uh, teacher and thank you to your principal. Great job, and Richards Huskies. Huskies. Now there's only going to be one sore, which is going to be us, because you're leaving. So <laughs> it seemed like we were in like in a big restaurant. I don't mean that we were saying. All we needed was the dinner, because yeah. the music was perfect. And so we recognize that the level of talent that we have, let's make it clear, these are middle school students. Middle school. That okay. concludes the superintendent's report. All righty. Give them a couple of seconds for them to exit. I wanted to leave with them with the guitar. <laughs> but back to reality. Yeah, we got here. All righty, guys. Moving on to the uh, next one be uh, discussion items. Uh, item number one under that be update on the LED light uh, project. Mr. Loya. Good evening, Mr. Board President, uh, Board of Trustees, Dr. B. Our next item is an update on our LED project. We have Mr. Cody Glover from PSI to give you a quick uh, presentation. Go ahead. Good evening, board members. Uh, I'm afraid I got the short end of the stick because I'm not playing a guitar. <laughs> and I can't uh, follow that up very well, but I'll give it a try. So... Um, Again, I'm Cody Glover, I'm with Performance Services. Uh, I'm the project manager over uh, your LED project that we have going on. Just wanted to run through a couple of highlights here, um, kind of give you an update on where we are. Uh, so I've organized this in three different ways, kind of like we're running the project. You have exterior, uh, which is everything attached to the building that's on the exterior. You have pole lights, parking lot obviously, and then uh, interior. So your first list here is uh, your exterior, about 99% of it is complete at this point in time, so you should see just about every, uh, every building on here. Uh, secondly is the parking lot. Uh, we'll probably, uh, let's call it 75% complete on that. We should be uh, uh, fully complete by uh, this time, March, so four weeks from now. And then a fully completed interior, exterior parking lot, all buildings. Uh, would be our interior list here. And uh, that's probably grown in the last couple of days. I'm pretty sure uh, we're done with Tabasco at this point. Uh, in any event, I also have some pictures just to kind of give you an idea of some of the stuff that we're doing out there. So your typical, your typical hallway in Fort Ice looked like this before. And it looks like that now. Some other examples of some uh, pretty major changes would be, I'm not sure I have a before of this. Uh, this is the gym. Um, so about twice the light level it was before. I believe this is uh, the after of the cafeteria and that's the before. So before and after. This was an interesting one. So this is your, uh, yeah, Jimmy Carter cafeteria, before and after. So again, before, after. And uh, I believe we have uh, some of your exterior here. 
and that's a, an aerial view. Uh, we don't have a good before one of that, but you can see across the street there, the school we haven't done yet. <coughs> you probably know your geography better than me, but I don't know what school that is over there, but uh, you can obviously tell what it's gonna look like or does look like now that we're done with it. That is Jimmy Carter's high school. Um, Jim, yeah. Um, so that's all I have for you guys tonight. Do you have any questions for me that I haven't answered for you? Any questions, guys? We good? Anybody? No. Thank all you right. so much. Thank you. Okay, next item, guys, would be the discussion on the Consulting for Government and Educational Affairs. Thank you, Lord. Uh, Dr. Benavides, uh, Mr. President, uh, give me one second. Uh, this is Gus Garcia with Shepherd Government Affairs. Uh, let me set this up here real quick. While you're setting up, um, we have looked at the TEA certifications that um, TEA is going to be giving us credit, and I just handed a handout, and the yellow ones are the ones that we would like to um, expand um, in the trucking technician area, in the um, Cisco certified uh, networking area, in the clinical which is the clinical medical assistant, the certified dental assistant, uh, the medical laboratory assistant, and the emergency medical technician. And then the bottom two, the wastewater collections and water operators. These are the ones that we see a need based on uh, student interest. And uh, the presentation today is to see whether uh, we would like to engage services with Mr. Garcia, to help us see if there's funding available to expand these programs. That's what the presentation is about this afternoon. So good evening again. My name is Gus Garcia. I represent Shepherd Government Affairs. I'm the managing partner for the organization. Uh, before you, the brochure I handed you basically is a scope of services proposal as Dr. Benavides was mentioning, uh, we're here today to discuss with you the opportunity to provide advocacy services at the state level as well as the local level. We understand that in the future, human capital is a tremendous investment that schools are starting to make. Many different schools are looking at different workforce programs, work solution programs, career ladders, uh, organizations or programs that would help the school get students ready for college or certified or ready for the workforce or life in general. Uh, by trade, uh, I'm in economic development. My partner has been a chief of staff. There's bios of us on the back of those scope of services proposals. Um, and we'd like to present to you today in an effort to help you or assist Loyola as the school district uh, get grants, uh, derive programs or create programs that would help them to achieve career ladder uh, opportunities get certified, uh, different programs that might be available at the state level. Uh, we would work in tandem with your grant writer or your grant writing program. To the meeting and we'd also work with local cities, local industry, different programs throughout the city, throughout the Hidalgo County, the universities, etc., to help derive or develop these programs that would help train your students for the future. There's lots of different programs available, there's lots of money and funding. Uh, myself, as a economic, certified economic developer, my services are actually reimbursable through grant programs that are available. So we would actually work with your team to find solutions that are outside the box, uh, grants or monies that are available that maybe uh, you haven't seen or that we haven't thought about, programs that would help your students achieve uh, either a certificate or higher education and be prepared for the future. We know that the Hoy ISD is right now faced with lots of different challenges like every other school across the state. Some of those challenges are charter schools or private schools. Students are leaving public schools to go to those types of schools. So we feel that these types of programs, grant money is what schools depend on to be able to achieve the level of education, community involvement that parents are looking for. So we're here to help you find those monies and develop those programs by working in tandem with the organization, with Dr. Benavides as well. Um, 
to help give those students a stronger opportunity or better opportunity to achieve those career ladders, or at least be ready for those career ladders once they are entering the workforce. Um, so I have a small presentation here uh, to go over. Uh, deliverables, as I mentioned in the, in the packet that you have in front of you, are to develop a strategic plan and identify the challenges that exist within the school district and the community. To have implementation, to have ongoing strategy and support, outreach, uh, lobbying in the state. There's lots of different laws that are coming in, play, coming in place in the next biennium, as you may know. There's different laws that Governor Abbott that will impact the a school district, as well as school districts across the state. So we want to be your advocate. We understand that you can't be in Austin all the time. You can't be up there and fighting for different issues. You also need to be made aware of anything that might be affecting you and how we can help you achieve those goals by advocating for you in Austin, not just with your local representative, but access to representatives across the state, whether it be in Dallas, Houston, those on committees, subcommittees, as well as calendars, and finally, eventually, to the House and State Senate. Uh, tracking of bills that might affect the school district or might affect the education system within the state of Texas and follow through. Follow through with your staff, with your superintendent, and everybody in your organization to see what we can do to help you achieve uh, the problems or over overcome the obstacles that you're facing as, as a school district. Uh, there's many different programs that we've looked at, and we've talked to Dr. Benavides about some of these programs in our visit with her. Uh, there's 74 different certifications that are allowed by TEA. We'd like to look at those programs that you've already done, I'm sure, and see what would be the best fit for this community and work with local industry partners uh, to find out what programs would be a best fit. Uh, through the implementation, we would pro provide support services, grant writing support, consultation plan, services delivered, identify those obstacles, and have a smooth rollout once the program has been identified and worked with your team and how to do it. Uh, the ongoing strategy is project support, a presentation to this board, providing the benchmarking data and analytics. There's many different uh, facets to applying for grants and getting those grants. It's not just applying. I mean, you have to put your best foot forward and have the best <coughs> opportunity or the best chance of achieving those grants. As a certified economic developer, workforce, education, and collaboration with cities, the universities, higher education, and industry is what I do, what I have been doing. And then with, on the lobbying side, being able to work with our state representative, PEA, Workforce Solutions, and being able to devise or create those programs so you have the best opportunity to achieve a grant. Um, basic guidelines is just your background, and what's your implementation, mission, the goals, how are you going to implement, how are you going to continue to train your, your staff and have the best chance for approval and implementation or success. Uh, Governor Abbott, as well as Commissioner Morath, had put out uh, a strategic plan this past year. And they identified different school districts within the state that they felt were high achievers. And all of them felt that there was a formula for achieving the best possible outcomes for their students. We want to look at those, uh, we want to look at those strategies and make sure that your grants are doing the exact same thing and meeting those goals so that we have the best chance of getting a grant for the programs that you decide to implement. One of the ways that you get that, as you know, is an application goes to the state. Those applications are reviewed by different grant writers depending on the size of the grant. Uh, once that grant reaches a certain amount of points, it's then before an oral interview. As an economic developer that has that's certified, I can go with your team. Our team can go with your team. Obviously, once you pass the oral, oral interview, it goes before the commissioner's designee, and that commissioner then decides where the grants will go to, and you're awarded the grant. So we want to be with you every step of the way during that process and try and help the whole ISD uh, receive those monies. Uh, these are some of the strategies that are part of the uh, grants that are right now available. So you have recruit support and retrain teachers and principals. These are rolled out for by uh, the Every Student Succeeds Act, as you may know, uh, is a foundation of reading and math, connect high school, career, and college, which we feel is a very strong area for this particular, uh, this particular community and county and then improve on low-performing schools. So our grants would basically be structured around these strategies that have already been set out by the state. So we want to help get involved with, like I said, the industry partners, the local community, your city, your, your, your school district, the universities, and the colleges that are here in the area. And uh, that's something I've been doing as an economic developer uh, for quite some time. I've sat on panels with the universities and talked about workforce development and innovation and human capital investment for our students so they're ready for the workforce. Um, there's all, this is what you basically would be a public-private partnership. We want to look at what partners are in the state, in the city, in Adelaide County, and how we can develop programs that would fit within your goals. 
So that framework would then develop a program <coughs> and eventually would apply for a grant, et cetera, and help you achieve the goals that you want. Uh, right now, you currently have some very good programs. I've looked at some of them, uh, which is La Jolla ISD EdTech and your health science professionals. Uh, you're working with local universities. I, I'm aware of that. And so we want to use those partnerships you've already established and work with also the local industry to help achieve better programs. So we think you have a good foundation for being able to do that. We want to be able to help you achieve, get even better if we can. Uh, as I mentioned on some of these grants, because I am a certified economic developer that works in these types of programs, my services are reimbursable. Our contracts are for a longer period of time, usually for two years, but they're, they're terminable within 30 days. And so we progress bill, so at any given time, if you feel that we're not doing the job or we're not providing the services you need, we can be terminated within 30 day notice. So that's something that we would be providing, as you know, updates, talking about the programs and working with your school superintendents and your task force to determine whether or not we're doing a good job. At the same time, we're offering local advocacy and state advocacy at the state level. So any laws or any legislative issues that come up, we're here for you to discuss and try and overcome those obstacles as well. So it's almost a two-for-one type of program. Uh, and as I mentioned, my services as a certified economic developer, being part of your team, we can submit for reimbursement of those fees. Now, we can't do it all, but certainly the portion that would be billed as part of the grant development process would, be, would qualify for reimbursement because I am a certified economic developer. The difference between that and myself and, let's say, a grant writer consultant is that typically a grant writer consultant is not an economic developer or is not a certified economic developer. So it's a little bit more difficult to get reimbursed when a grant writer being part of your team when you already have grant writing services. So it could be a win-win where the services you're paying for my IPs would get actually reimbursed, added to the grant, and not subtracted from the monies that you would receive. So that's a big win-win for the, for the school district. As well as being able to recoup those monies, you're also getting the services of the local advocacy and the state advocacy in developing those programs. Uh, Governor Abbott put out a program called 6030. And what he's talking about is getting our age group from 25 to 34 with at least a college degree or a certificate of uh, educational or job workforce training. Right now it's about 30, 38%. So by 2030, he wants to get 60% of the students, which that would be about a freshman right about now at that in 2030. So they would be entering in the workforce, and they want to see them with certificates to be able to get jobs. As we all know, the value proposition of college education sometimes is very difficult for many of your students. And some of your students will be going to college. They'll get uh, certifications in welding, certification electrician. These are jobs, engineering, nursing. These are jobs where you can make 60,000, 70,000 a year, and then go to college. So these are types of things that we want to work with your, uh, with your school district in achieving for your students. So we can be part of this 60-30 plan that Governor <coughs> Abbott has rolled out. It's a tri-agency plan between the Texas Education Agency, uh, the Workforce Solutions, and also the Texas Higher Education Board and working with the State Board of Education is something that we would like to provide or work with you in developing a strategy. And that's really what it's about, is developing strategies along with your grant writing programs and your grant writing task force that fit into the strategies or the philosophies that have been laid out by EEA as well as the federal government so that those programs have a better chance of getting funded. Um, and these are just some of the goals that 30, 60 by 30 has implemented. These are some of the things we want to do and work with your organization as well. And I, and I can't emphasize enough the local and state advocacy that we'd be providing. As I mentioned, it's a two for one with a potential re reimbursement on the workforce development uh, and part of those grant programs that we'd be submitting if we were hired. And this is just an example of some of the multi-year grants uh, that have been achieved, 5.53. And if you look at some of the goals that are on there, these goals fall right in line or the objectives that fall right in line with uh, TIPS priority. So we want to do the exact same thing. We want to develop those goals and those priorities. We're not grant writers, but we work with your grant writing staff to develop programs that are going to fit, as I mentioned. And these are just some of the goals. And this particular school was a San Diego <coughs> ISD, got a $5.35 million multi-year grant. So the grants, the monies are out there. We just want to go out there and keep. We feel that because of the challenges that all schools are facing right now, the charter schools and private schools, where they're taking students away from your your organization, they're leaving. We need to get out there in the community and let them know that these are the types of programs that uh, public school districts are providing so that students will stay. And then once they stay, they'll stay in this community and be uh, active work, an active workforce, which helps economic development in your community as well, which spurs growth, which spurs tax dollars because they buy homes in the community. They, they're part of your community. 
So we feel like it's a, start, it's a holistic approach to developing your programs within your school district for your students so they can achieve either higher education or a certificate of training so they can get into the workforce and stay here. So it's a career ladder so that if they're working with local industry, they're not graduating from high school and then leaving the city. They're actually staying in the city because the programs were here, the industry partners were here, their jobs are here, the longevity and the growth of the community is here. We'd like to work with the city as well and the local industry partners that you have within your community. And then, of course, the final component is the advocacy. So outreach, tracking of new laws, the governor's office, legislative meetings. If that's something you want and you want to sit down with the legislators in Austin, we can certainly facilitate that and talk about some of the programs or obstacles that you need or that you're experiencing here <coughs> locally. And I thank you, and I'm here to answer any questions you may have with regarding to what services we'd like to provide. You're not a grant writer, but you will tell our grant writers like we have a We have a grant writer on our team. Okay. But we don't do the actual grant for you. We work with your, your existing grant fighter, grant writer, grant fighter, grant writer, or the person you designate to work on those grants, and we can walk them through that process. Okay. Any more questions, guys? Anybody else? Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. For your time. All right, moving on to the next uh, item would be public comments. Dr. B, do we have any public comments? Next, uh, we'll have consent agenda on the motion. So moved. A motion by Mr. Garza and a second by Mr. Alaniz. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. Uh, coming back to letter A, contracts. Number two, approval of consulting uh, for government and educational affairs. Mr. So Wolf. Second. A motion by Mr. Alaniz and a second by Mr. Cantu. All those in favor? Aye. All those Aye. opposed? Motion passes. Next item under contracts number three, memorandum of understanding related to the Texas Education Agency College of Education <coughs> Turnaround Partnerships Initiative between University of Texas Rio Grande Valley, College of Education, P-16 Integration, and La Jolla SD, Juarez Lincoln High School. So moved. Um, a motion by Mr. Cantu. Second. And a second by Mr. Cho. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. Under letter C, business and finance, number eight. Change order number four for the La Jolla ISD new negatorium project. So moved. Motion by Mr. Anis. Second. Second by Mr. Cantu. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. Under letter C, business and finance, uh, number nine. Change order number five for La Jolla ISD new negatorium project. So moved. Motion Aye. by Mr. Garza. And I have a second by Ms. Salinas. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. Number 10 under letter C, business and finance, uh, acceptance of substantial completion of the La Jolla ISD LED lighting project, cold and dry storage. Second move. Second. Is that you, Mr. Pena? Yes. Uh, motion by Mr. Pena and a second by Mr. Cantu. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes. Under letter C, business and finance number 11, acceptance of substantial completion for the La Jolla ISD LED lighting project, Jimmy Carter High School. So move. Motion by Mr. Cantu. Second. And a second by Ms. Salinas. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes. Under letter D, instruction and student services, number 12, uh, public hearing of the 2016-2017 Texas <coughs> Academic Performance Report, TAPR. And we will be going into a public hearing at this time at 7.09. Dr. Frank Digvera, Executive Director for Evaluation Services, uh, will walk us uh, through the um, taper report. Good evening, uh, President Salinas, board members, and Dr. Benavides. Uh, this is the report for 2017. We've covered some of this in previous presentations, so we'll go kind of quickly through some of it. <coughs> First of all, the ISD is accredited for this school year, 2017. All the schools in La Jolla ISD met the standard for this past school year. <clears throat> this is uh, depicting on page six of the report uh, the demographics for La Jolla ISD, which you see there on the left. Uh, we're mostly Hispanic. Um, we have 72 white students, or that's what we had in 2017. And across the state, the Hispanic uh, students are more than half of the students in the state. So we're Almost 3 million Hispanic students in the state. Next page, page 7. You have demographics comparing La Jolla ISD to Region 1 <coughs> to the state. 
And what you see there is that in Lao ISD, we have 53% of our students who are ELL, English language learners, while the region is at 37% uh, and the state at 19%. And this is relevant to this report because for English language learners, if they're learning English, it's harder to help them learn also all the other content areas. So we, we face a big challenge in La Jolla ISD, uh, which we, we welcome, and we welcome all, all students at La Jolla. So we also have 94% of our students being economically disadvantaged uh, compared to 85% at region, in Region 1 and 59% across the, the state of Texas. On page A, you have some data there uh, with regard to star performance, the percent of kids passing uh, in 2017 for reading, math, writing, science, and social studies. You can compare the state to the Hoya ISD to the region. That was just passing on page nine. The state is moving towards uh, looking at not just passing, but the 60 by 30 that was presented earlier. Uh, we're wanting for 60% of the kids uh, uh, to reach uh, uh, this standard here. So you can see where, where the students are falling right now. And the goal is uh, to get at least 60% by the year 2030. <coughs> the masters. That, that report is kids who are scoring at the highest levels on the STAR test. And in this new accountability system that's coming, this will be emphasized, all three of those levels. Not just passing, not just scoring at the college level, but also scoring almost perfect on the test. Another emphasis uh, right now is college, uh, college readiness. And that's on, on page 20. And you can see there that the uh, Hawaii ISD had great improvement from 2015 to the class of 2016, catching up to the region, catching up to the state. In the next section, uh, we uh, cover the, the distinctions that were earned by the, by the campuses, that we've already covered that thoroughly. Uh, so we'll move on. That it's the required part of the report. On page 27, you have the next section, which has to do with uh, performance objectives. These are the targets that the campuses and the district have set. They're based on previous data. They're goals for improvement. And again, you've probably reviewed those in the district and campus improvement plan. So you won't spend time on that. This, this one's probably a little bit new. Uh, I mean, we go over it every year, but this is uh, probably new data for this year. These are the students who graduated from La Jolla in 2015, um, how they uh, performed in college a year later. And it's by campus, so you can see there uh, Jimmy Carter High School, the number of students who attended a, a four-year university, a two-year college, uh, and kids who were not trackable because uh, their ID numbers perhaps were, were not the ID numbers that the state is able to track, and students not found. They didn't find them in the college. And you have that kind of data there for Juarez Lincoln High School, for La Jolla High School, and on the next page for Palmview High School. And at that time, uh, Salina STEM High School didn't have graduates yet. Next we have... Uh, the financial part of the report, I believe uh, Mr. Vela will, will address that. Thank you, Dr. Rivera. Uh, most of this information that, uh, that is part of the TAFER report is uh, for the school year 2015-2016. We've gone through most of this stuff through uh, either the annual audit or the first report. The last first report that we had actually covered this data right here. Uh, so quickly, uh, for the district, to total revenue was 293 million, and total receipts was 299 million. And it tells you the amount per student as to how much we spent per student. That's the general fund. All funds, we 
total revenue was 342 million and total receipts was 348 million. On page 37 is our fund balances. Uh, back in 2016, we had $113.9 million in fund balance. Our expenditures um, were $293.4 million, $293 million uh, for the general fund. For all funds, we had $346.7 million. And then that, again, by object, by function, on page 38, we have it broken down by function, by instruction, instructional resources, curriculum and staff development, school leadership, and total operating expenditures in the general fund was 276.7, and in all funds was $305.9 million. And page 39 is a continuation of page eight, uh, 38. And on page 40, <coughs> our tax rate was $1.17 for M&O, $14 for debt service, $1.31 total. Our certified property values was $2.1 billion. On 41 is a breakdown of the fund balances as to how we have it broken down. Any questions on the financial data that was previously covered? If not, turn it over to Mr. Villarreal for his section of the report. Thank you, Mr. Vela. Distinguished board members, uh, Mr. President Salinas and uh, Superintendent Dr. Navides, every year let me make sure we're on the right track. Uh, every year, as per Texas Education Code 39053, uh, La Jolla Independent School District uh, must publish an annual report of the violent crimes in, or incidents at the district. And then the report must include number, rate, and type of incident, information concerning school violence per, and prevention and intervention policies and procedures used by the district, and findings from the safe and Drug-Free Schools and Community Act uh, survey now is going to be known as the Texas School Survey of Drug and Alcohol Use. Uh, and the process is very simple. Uh, May 18th, survey is going to be uh, conducted, and the results will be reported next year. Uh, on page 45, as you can see, uh, Violent criminal acts are those reported in the Public Education Information Management System, or PEMS. And there are the code <coughs> numbers at the top, 17, 18, 19, 28, 32, and 46. And there on the left column, what they mean. And we go back to 2014, 15, 15, 16, 16, 17, and currently uh, 17, 18, as of January 31st. Uh, are there any questions? Anybody have any questions, guys? No, Mr. Arnold. Okay, finally, these are the preventative measures that La Jolla ISD does. I don't know, but there's over 32 interventions, and I'm not going to go all of them, but over all of them. But uh, we do course have a student code of conduct we've installed a lot of surveillance cameras especially in the hot spots that's where the kids hang out chapter 37 which is uh, preventions and interventions safe and drug free schools referrals to outside agencies school counselors as well anti-bullying and red ribbon week campaigning uh, drug prevention use campaigns responsibility ed our values code and so on and so forth uh, special education services, communities and schools. On the other column, we have, of course, 24, I'll start at the bottom there, 24 MOUs, which we do uh, incorporate with outside agencies, such as Advancing Together, Reset, uh, Challenges and Changes. Uh, we also have a transition to hope, 
Academy. And we also have three academies, one for each comprehensive high school. We also have a Little Hope to help uh, elementary students with issues. And then, of course, uh, the Raptor system, which is what used to attract parents or volunteers to go into the campuses. And, of course, uh, we have social workers to middle schools and the high schools that are uh, helping us address any and, and try to prevent, you know, gang violence and drug use in the campus. If there aren't any questions, that concludes my part of them. Any questions, guys? No. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Villa and Mr. Virial. Uh, <coughs> on page 48, the last slide, that's just showing everybody uh, where you can get this information. You can get it on the TA website. You can get it from the La Jolla ISD website. Uh, or from my office. So, and and that, that concludes the report. Thank you, Mr. Rivera. Sure. At this time, since it's a public hearing, does anybody have any comments? You may do them at this time. Anybody? Okay, it's uh, 7.22, and this uh, public hearing is uh, adjourned for item number 12 at 7.22. I'll need a motion. I so move. I have a motion by Mrs. Salinas and a second by Mr. Ochoa. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. It is still 722 and under section codes 551071, 551072, and 551074. We will be going into executive session 722. Okay, it's 804 and we are back from executive session. I'd like to make an item. Uh, Motion items one, two, and three as discussed in executive session. Uh, motion by Mr. Anis. Second. Second by Mr. Cantu. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. <coughs> Number four, guys. <coughs> Property uh, donation I by La Jolla ISD to the city of Sullivan City. Okay, I'd like to make a motion, please, uh, that we donate 4.98, if I'm not I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, 9.48. Okay. Correct. Uh, to the city of Sullivan. With the stipulation? Of whatever was discussed. Of what was discussed in executive session. I'll second yes. that. Okay, I have a motion by Mrs. Uh, Salinas with the uh, clause as well in there, and a second by Mr. Alanis. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Before I say motion passes as, <coughs> as recommended by legal counsel, correct? As recommended by legal counsel, okay. correct. Added to that as well. All those in favor, guys? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. Thank you so much. Meeting is adjourned at 8.05. <laughs>